Good morning. Uh, welcome to House Human Services Committee. This is Thursday, January 27th. And the first part of our uh, committee meeting today will be uh, a discussion and reflection uh, on Prop 5, Declaration of Rights, the Right to Personal Reproductive Liberty. Um, and at the um, end of our discussion, um, I will be um, entertaining a motion um, for um, action. Okay, uh, last night we had um, a public hearing where there were 70 people signed up, I believe, um, and <clears throat> I can be corrected by, um, by Julie if I am wrong, but I believe that while 70 people uh, signed up, 60 people actually ended up testifying because um, 10 people and sort of it was evenly split in terms of positions um, on the amendment. 10 people did not show up. Um, I was glad to see that one person who was not there in their order of which they had signed up actually came in at the end and so were able to um, participate. Um, and so we, you know, we heard from that and we also uh, were presented with um, two petitions um, from Vermonters for uh, good government and Vermonters for common good. Um, and those petitions are right uh, here. Um, all of these petitions are um, uh, directed, um, both, both sets of petitions are directed at uh, um, requesting us not to um, support <coughs> um, passage of um, Prop 5. Um, the first one from Vermonters for Common Good is a petition to my legislators to, put, um, to not put late term abortion in our constitution. And I'm going to, um, <clears throat> Carl, I see your hand and I will get to you in a second. Thank you. Um, I'm going to perhaps um, put a legislative counsel on, um, on the spot, but um, my understanding is that uh, Federal law, for, there is a federal law that prohibits late term abortion. And the physicians will, in fact, um, there is not a medical, um, that is not a medically correct term, and that there is a uh, actual federal law that prohibits late term abortion. Um, yes, I believe so, and I can get you that information and send it to uh, and email it all to the committee. Okay, if you would, um, but that is, um, I, um, is my statement accurate? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, um, you know, I'm sorry, there, this is a discussion in committee, um, and I, I realize, and folks who are listening, we happen to have um, someone in the committee room um, who, uh, just asked to speak. This is not a time. We have finished taking testimony. The committee that we have finished taking testimony, and I will ask the I will ask the sergeant at arms to remove the person in the room if they do not keep quiet. Carl. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I was just going to say I thought it was a very respectful uh, hearing last night. Uh, unfortunately. We were not able to bring the parties together in the, the, the name of our creator and uh, simultaneously satisfying uh, women's issues before us. But I thought it was uh, well run and uh, basically respectful of each other. Obviously, I'm not happy with the ultimate outcome, not, not that we've decided yet. I just have a feeling. Um, anyway, that's enough said at this point until we get to the vote. Thank you. Um, um, thank you, Representative Rosenquist. And I, I want to say personally, it means a lot to me to hear you say that the commit that the um, hearing was run um, respectfully. And I meant it when I said at the end of the hearing that I really was um, thankful and impressed with 
not just the committee, but everyone who was in the well of the house, as well as um, who testified in terms of the, the thoughtfulness and the respect for um, the clarity of their different opinions, um, but the way that they presented them. So thank you. Um, okay. Um, and so we have a lot of those and I want these petitions. And um, so folks, um, I want to encourage um, you to um, look at them. They are uh, directed to individuals um, of us. These were, um, um, I think people could uh, click on, it appears that people could click online um, and uh, then send them in for some of these. And uh, this, um, the second one is uh, the second petition, which um, is in the larger box down here, um, is to the committee in general um, from the Vermonters for Good Government um, and um, who are opposed to Prop Proposal 5. Um, and uh, they, one, are concerned about. Um, that there, that, there, that there is a rush to get um, Prop 5, Article 22 through the legislative process. I want to remind people and folks who are listening that this, is the, this has been a four year process. It started in 2019 when there was, it went through the Senate and then the House and there was a public hearing in the House um, in 2019. Um, it then was, was um, passed by the Senate in a new biennium and we got, um, this committee got Proposition 5 assigned to us in April of 2020. We did not take it up then. We have taken it up um, now. Um, we had a uh, two weeks of testimony and a public hearing. Um, so this is a four year process. Um, and again, as I said at the end of the uh, hearing, what we are doing is putting this on the ballot. And um, for whatever your position is, this is what, it, what, what is important is that you state your is not in a petition and act, you know, but rather um, on the on the ballot um, and vote yes or no um, on November on election day or when you get. And in fact, I believe that ballots are going to be mailed. I believe that November. Our, oh, thank you. Oh, our yes. Town board, <laughs> our town board. will be. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, you, you will not even have to go to the polls and you can, in fact, um, it will be mailed out to you probably sometime in October. 45 days before election 45 days before election day. So you will be able to um, vote by mail um, in terms of that. Um, it won't arrive to you 45 days before election day. But. Um, and um, the, the um, petition goes on to express um, um, that um, Vermont voters were attacked for trying to speak out about this bad proposal. Um, I'm not aware of that. They certainly were not in the well of the house um, that we heard last night. Um, and uh, um, the, these are, they are alarmed that Article 22 would enshrine late term abortion. Anything uh, goes abortion in the constitution. We just sort of covered that in terms of late term abortion um, is while not a legal, not a medical term is a term that is used is used in federal law and it is not allowed. Remove conscience rights from doctors and nurses who do not wish to perform abortions or sterilizations. I think while there are differences of opinion on how that goes, we have gotten um, some very clear testimony, written testimony that um, one, there is um, uh, a part of federal law that they that that um, folks have to. And please, anyone else, <laughs> add to my um, my memory and my recollection as to what we are doing. There's um, a con there's it's protected um, uh, ones. Um, 
one's conscience rights, whether they are for, whether they relate to performing an abortion, whether they relate to performing blood transfusions or other medical procedures um, that are uh, contrary to one's deep religious um, views, those conscience rights are in fact um, protected. And at the same time, um, medical, um, medical institutions have, a, uh, have to balance in an emergency the health and safety of a um, individual. Um, and uh, there's also a whole ethical process that um, at later um, that, that medical, that all of the providers in Vermont um, do. Um, uh, require taxpayer funding of radical policies, regardless of what elected officials or voters um, desire. Um, this may refer to, I'm not quite sure what this refers to, um, but Vermont has since, uh, I believe the time of Governor Madeline Cunin, um, uh, su um, supported um, low-income Vermonters um, who are on Medicaid, they use, um, we use state funds for those instances where they need um, an abortion. Um, or for that matter, when people need any kind of reproductive um, health care decisions. Um, and it will prevent future generations from weighing in on these important issues through the democratic process. Um, Want to clarify that, in fact, a um, this is, as in other constitutional amendments, there is a process by which people can go to court and challenge it. Um, and uh, as we learn, I imagine that this, you know, people may challenge, people challenge constitutional issues. Um, and that this is part of the, this is part of the democratic process. Amending the constitution in Vermont is a, is a live um, living document. Uh, the last time we amended the constitution was, I think, was when we allowed 18 year olds to vote in the primary, if they, 17 year olds to vote in the primary, if they were going to be 18 by November. Um, we have, um, and there are two actually um, proposals to amend the constitution that voters will be. Um, and that is actually part of the democratic process. And it was built into our, our state constitution that it can be amended. Um, but uh, Vermonters for good government, um, those were, so we have lots of, lots of petitions in terms of that. Um, I don't know if anyone, um, I will um, be, uh, Representative McFawn will, um, is not, uh, able to be here right this moment. He will be coming as uh, on as soon as he can. And um, as is our practice in this committee, um, if we take an action, we will leave the uh, vote um, open till the um, end of the day so that um, that individual can um, vote. Um, I'm, does anyone, um, Carl has made um, a, a comment around the hearing. Does anyone want to reflect on what uh, we heard at the hearing or what we've heard in the last two weeks? I'm ha happy to do that, Madam Chair. I, um, I just wanted to let the committee know that last night I went home and I thought a lot about what I wanted to say today. And I didn't want to just speak off the cuff. I wanted to really write it down. So I'm I'm going to read what I wrote last night before I went to sleep. <laughs> and um, I just would, this is a, something that I've been thinking about throughout the summer. And then when we all came together and heard testimony here in this room, and then the testimony last night. So, of course. Oh, I was trying to go. Where's <laughs> <laughs> my phone buzzing? Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so I don't know about you all, but last week when I learned that it was the 49th anniversary of, the, of Roe versus Wade, um, and that the year before that was the Vermont's, um, where Vermont's courts made a decision to throw out an anti-abortion law. I was kind of surprised. I knew it was about that, but for half a century, 
individuals in this country have had reproductive liberty. My whole reproductive life, I have had the freedom to decide in the privacy of my home, with my family and my healthcare providers, whether to use contraception or not, whether to have a child or not. But now it dawned on me that I had taken it all for granted. Now all of that could be taken away. With support for Roe eroding in the US Supreme Court and growing concerns about diminishing federal protections, it is absolutely possible that our federal government could allow states to change this and put state legislators in charge of making reproductive decisions for the people of Vermont. It actually scares me to think that my daughter and my three sons might not have, sorry, <laughs> the same rights that I grew up with, that we would actually go backwards. Last night, when I heard that Governor Ronald Reagan in 1967, a Republican governor signed a law to guarantee legal safe abortions in California because entire floors at some hospitals were taken up with women who were critically ill after trying to end their pregnancies at home. I remembered why this change to Vermont's constitution is so incredibly important to me. I want these decisions to remain between individuals and their healthcare providers, not in state houses. I am 100% supportive of amending Vermont's constitution. This amendment protects everyone's right to reproductive freedom, as we all heard the right to use or not use temporary or permanent birth control, the right to use or not use or, or um, perform sterilization, and the right to carry a pregnancy to term or not. Most importantly for me is that this allows all reproductive decision making to remain between the individual and their physician or other healthcare provider. My husband, my daughter, and my niece went into the field of medicine to take care of their patients in the best way they know how. They were trained and educated to help their patients to understand and learn about the pros and cons of every decision they make with regard to their physical health and their mental well-being. Why should their reproductive health needs be treated any differently? The right to this Privacy is paramount. And finally, in my mind and my heart, I believe it is imperative that we allow Vermont voters to have the last word. Every voter should have the opportunity to make this decision for themselves, their family, their community, and their state. If we truly trust our fellow Vermonter, how can we not bring this important decision to them? So I vote yes. Thanks. Thank you, Representative. Okay, thank you. Um, I was very eloquent, and um, I regret that I didn't have time to uh, <laughs> write something. Um, but this morning as I was driving in, I really reflected about the testimony that we heard last night. I'm new to this body and I was honored to have that experience last night. That was very respectful and made me really proud to serve in Vermont. Um, I was also really moved um, to hear from so many brave women that shared their personal stories and um, really touching stories that brought tears to my eyes. And I was trying to describe some of the stories to my daughter and thinking about, you know, she's growing up in a life in a world where she can take it for granted. And, um, you know, at her age, it doesn't resonate, but I hope that it will, you know, with time have some impact on her. I also found it really reaffirming to hear from religious and uh, medical leaders last night uh, in my support of the um, of Prop 5, the Declaration of Rights, the right to personal reproductive liberty. Um, 
I support this proposition. I was um, really honored to hear from so many people that came out last night. And I'm really proud to live in a state uh, and serve in a state that prioritizes an individual's right to personal reproductive liberty. And I will be voting yes. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Does anyone else want to say anything? Oh, I guess I will. Sure. Uh, one is, the, the, um, as a person who thinks that abortion should be legal, but safe and rare, um, I think that this does go too far. Um, it is not uh, prescriptive of um, the state's compelling interest as the trimesters go along. Uh, the thing about Ronald Reagan isn't quite accurate. He um, did do that, but he quickly regretted it. It was part of a deal um, that uh, he didn't expect it to pass. Just so the record is clear on that, uh, he didn't expect it to uh, pass, and he quickly regretted doing so. And he was a champion against uh, abortion for most of his life. Um, having said that, um, I think that uh, for me, whether I agree with this proposition or not, and I definitely don't agree with the emotional um, side of, uh, um, you know, insisting that we're going to go back to the 50s, uh, which is just not going to happen. Um, I certainly don't uh, support Texas's law, which I think is a little bit on the extreme side. Um, but we have a very different situation in Vermont where we just did um, age 57. Um, so these, these protections are already in place. But my vote on this uh, prop that, uh, today is not going to be whether or not I think it's good or bad. I will be voting on whether or not I think the people of Vermont deserve the right to vote on it or not. And they do. So. Thank you. Does anyone else want to make a um, say anything before I call for it? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I also had a very difficult time writing remarks this morning. Um, I've been in support of Prop 5. I've spoken out in support of Prop 5. and. And recognizing that so often when we talk about this, we talk about it as a women's issue, and it very much is. It is very much a women's issue. But the, the amendment itself is so much more expansive than a women's issue or just focusing on abortion. And I think of my own identities and the way that they show up and the access to the care that I'm able to um, receive here in the state of Vermont. Um, and to know that we would enshrine this in our constitution means that not only would that be life-saving care for myself, but I think of the trans youth in our state. I think of other trans people um, who need this care. And uh, although so many of us consider abortion and contraception and pregnancy to be an, a, a women's issue, I want to expand that to include of course, lesbian and bisexual women, transgender men, non-binary people, uh, gender non-conforming people. It is, it is inclusive of our, our full community and it, it is needed because across identities, people can get pregnant and they can use contraception and they can have abortions and carry pregnancies and parent and we should all be able to engage in those decisions um, in consultation, of course, with our medical community, but it is a, a difficult and personal decision. And so I, I'm proud to uh, vote yes on this proposition today. Um, and I think this is one of, uh, I know I'm a new member to this body, but I think this is one of the most important votes that I will be taking in my time here. Thank you. There'll be more opportunities. I would entertain a um, motion. I will move for us to vote on uh, the proposition on the Constitution. Vote in the oh, in favor. In favor. Okay. There is a motion on the table to um, support passage moving forward. Um, Prop five. A second. Is there a second? A second. Okay, and there's a second by Representative Brumstead. Um, after we um, 
make the uh, motion in the second. There is another opportunity in the structure for comments. Um, Carl or anyone else um, want to make any comment before the clerk calls the roll? Representative Rosenquist. I just like to say it is with a heavy and sad heart that I approach this vote. Uh, we were unable to bring bring the, the creator's law and the law of reproductive freedom uh, together in a common place. And unfortunately, uh, like so many good laws in our country, there's some of some of God and some of man in those laws. So, and we were unable to do that. And I feel very sad and disheartened. And I, I will be voting no, I'm sure. Thank you, Representative Rosenquist. If there's no other discussion, the clerk shall uh, commence to call the roll. Representative Wood. Yes. Representative Small. Yes. Representative Rosenquist. No. Representative Garfano. Yes. Representative Whitman. Yes. Representative Payal. Yes. Representative Gregoire. Yes. Representative Noyes. Yes. Representative Brumstead. Yes. Representative Pew. Um, can you, oh, did you? I didn't call yes. Representative McFawn because- Okay, we will hold it up. Okay. Representative Pew, yes. And as I spoke before, yeah, yes. I will hold the vote until we uh, have yeah. Representative McFawn available. Um, so the, uh, the tentative vote is uh, nine in favor uh, and one opposed. And we will close the vote when Representative um, McFawn um, is back from his um, appointment. Um, thank you, committee. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, and uh, this will end the first half of the morning session of the Vermont House Human Services Committee. When we come back, we will be coming back at 1015 and we will be hearing about COVID updates um, as it relates to childcare and pre-K settings. So, um, Thank you.